My name is Mina, welcome to my channel Mina Reads, and today we're starting a reading vlog, specifically a 24 hour reading vlog, and I'm going to try to read 3 books in 24 hours and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but this video is sponsored by Penguin Teen and I'm participating in the Ember Along where we're reading a book each month from the Ember Quartet and I'm really excited to start this second book, well actually I've already started it, I'm like 30 pages into it, but it's been really interesting rereading this series um because I read it a few years ago so it was really interesting rereading the first book and now I'm reading the second book and I'm excited to share my thoughts with you guys um because I have a lot of thoughts on this um so my plan is to try and read this whole book today and I also want to try and complete You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria and this is a buddy read with Noria from Noria Reads and Cindy from Read with Cindy. I really want to finish this so I can like talk to them about like my final thoughts on like the ending and everything because um, I'm a little bit behind. So need to finish this as well and I'm also reading this comic called Sleepless. So it's like this thing about royalty and the main character is like a black princess and it's about her and like her bodyguard and I'm just like very obsessed with the whole concept of it so I want to start that. And so yeah, those are the three things that I'm working on and I am also starting my online learning. Uh, it's fall semester and I have classes and stuff. So today I have one class at 11 and that class is like an hour and 20 minutes and so that's the only class I have today uh, so hopefully I'll be able to read these books like do my homework and also I need to clean my house so like let's see how much we achieve how productive can we be in one day Hi friends, it's like much later in the day, but I ended up finishing Sleepless and I finished my classes for today. So I have to do a little bit of homework reading and then I'm going to dive into Torch Against the Night and I need to clean my room. So I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook um, on Libra FM. I love supporting independent bookstores. So I love Libra FM and if you're interested in trying it out, I have like a referral code in my description below and I'm pretty sure you get a free book. I'm pretty sure that's how it works like um but yeah I really have been liking that service a lot recently so I might listen to Torch Against the Night on there and uh so I thought that like I should tell you how I felt about Sleepless and then I want to tell you some of my thoughts about like the Ember series in general before I dive into the second book so first let's talk about Sleepless. Sleepless is about this girl named Poppy so she is like a lady at court and her father was and her father was the king but he recently passed away and so then there's been like a shift in power and her uncle is now the king and so it's basically about how court is this really like tumultuous and dangerous place for her at the moment because of this shift in power and she also has this knight and uh, his name is Serenic and Serenic and her they have like a really interesting relationship I always love like the royalty and then like their loyal bodyguard trope I don't know why but I'm really into it I really like it a lot and Serenic is a sleepless soldier which basically means like exactly what it says that he never sleeps he's like under some kind of enchantment and it's just interesting it's like subtly magical it has some nice like little world building elements to it and I thought that it was just like really cute. The art style was really gorgeous. I think I showed you guys some clips but it was just like really pretty and I really really have been loving it. Uh, so I can't wait to read the next volume. Uh, so yeah it's like it's got political intrigue, it's got the bodyguard trope, black princess, royalty person as the main character. We love to see it. We love to see it. So now moving on to Ember in the Ashes. So the first book in Ember in the Ashes, uh, I just finished that like last week maybe and I have lots of thoughts about it. So what I'll say about Ember in the Ashes if you don't know what that series is about, it's essentially about this young girl named Laia and she is a scholar. Scholars have been conquered by this other group of people called the Marshals and so the scholars don't have that many rights and um, at the beginning of the story Laia's family is raided by the Marshall uh, military and so they all are like you know murdered. And one of her family members Darren he ends up getting like taken away to prison and so Laia is struggling to find him and figure out a way to save him. 
um and she's really racked by like survivor's guilt because she's one of the only people in her family who survived and like evaded prison so she ends up going undercover as a spy at this school called black cliff where they train the military soldiers for the martial empire and she ends up going there trying to get some kind of information about like where her brother might be also follows this other character named elias and elias is essentially like a child soldier and so he's an adult now but he's been raised as a child soldier by the martial empire and he is a very moral person and he really doesn't believe in killing which is basically completely opposed to the fact that he's a soldier so it's really about him like grappling with his own personal morals and like the doctrine of his people the marshals and i think that it's interesting to see how his and Laya's stories connect and like how they meet and everything like that and i think the story is really like fast paced and um I really appreciate that and I really like Laya especially as a main character because I think that she's just really interesting. I feel like this is something that people have been saying for years about the Ember and the Ashes series but I just really do like the fact that Laya is really like an everyday girl and she's just really scared. She's not a warrior and but she still doesn't let that prevent her from like being brave and doing what she has to do for her family. Like I really appreciate that about Laya a lot. That's my like thought process going into this second book because we have Elias and Laya. Their storylines have really interesting Intersected and they're now on the run with one another and I won't give you too many spoilers if you haven't read the first book yet but as of right now they're currently on the run with each other so do with that what you will and uh I just think that it'll be interesting to see how that works and how Elias's like morality will play into this escape that they have planned and also they introduced another point of view with this character named Helene and I do not like Helene at all so we're going to see how that goes and I'll keep you updated. All right, y'all, I'm like 250 pages into Torch Against the Night right now, and I'm really enjoying it, like more than I enjoyed the first book. Um, I feel like I'm finally really connecting with the characters, and I like the characters a lot more in this installment, even Helene, who I don't particularly like, but I feel like her having her own perspective was like very enriching to her character because as a character, I didn't like anything about her when I just knew her like through Elias's point of view. So I really like getting to know her as a character and I feel like the characters are just really interesting and the story is like really intense and I don't know I'm just I'm really into it. I'm also it really tones down some of the like romantic love triangle stuff that was going on in the first book so I'm enjoying the lack of that as well. So yeah this is actually going like pretty good and hopefully I'll be able to finish this tonight. I have like... 200 more pages to read and it's like seven o'clock so i don't know how that's gonna work but like maybe possibly it could happen friends i'm i like am really loving this which i'm kind of shocked by because in the first book i didn't feel super strongly connected to like the characters i was really interested in the storyline but the characters i wasn't feeling that strongly connected to them but in this book i'm really feeling like that connection and like the way that their characters are developing in this book is so interesting so in the first book like i mentioned we follow laya who is trying to get her brother back after he has been kidnapped and imprisoned by the empire and then we have a Elias who is struggling against like his the teachings of the empire and like his kind of brainwashing as a soldier of this imperial power and so we kind of continue on in that same vein with this book where Elias and Laya are teaming up to still try and save Laya's brother and I feel like this book like their internal monologue as characters is a lot less repetitive it was like very repetitive in the first book with Laya um, because she's really struggling with like survivor's remorse and she feels like it's all her fault that she survived and like everyone else in her family didn't survive and her brother's in jail and she feels like it's all her fault so that's like her monologue is very heavily about that in the first book and Elias's monologue is similar in that he feels like the weight of the world is on his shoulders and everything is his fault and it's all about like the moral conundrum of like him being a soldier here but also like you know hating it and hating the institution that he is a part of. I just feel like the way that they're being conveyed in this book is just so interesting to me and they feel much more fascinating and their monologue just feels so much more in-depth so much more fleshed out than 
the first book in the series so I've really been appreciating that. Also like I mentioned earlier I really don't like Helene as like a person like if she was real she wouldn't be my homegirl for sure but I think that her chapters are really interesting. Because Elias as I mentioned you know he was like a soldier but he personally finds like the empire that he's a part of to be morally repugnant and he really feels like everything that the empire does is terrible and Helene really doesn't feel like that she doesn't have any problems with like the institution of the empire herself she just kind of feels like oh like it's a job that I don't really like you know and that's kind of how she her approaches being a soldier and this book we get her point of view and we get to experience her she has now taken on this responsibility as like a leader in the military and she has to do things that she really doesn't want to do including hunting down Elias and Laia as they escape from the empire and everything so I think it's interesting to see like the contrast between Helene and Elias it's 12 25 a.m and I finished so more thoughts in the morning Hi friends, so we're back in the office and it's morning, it's 7 a.m. and I completed Torch Against the Night last night like I mentioned and it was really good. I really ended up enjoying it a lot. Um, like I said, I really loved the way that the characters developed in this sequel. There were definitely a lot of like oh shit moments in this book that was very interesting so I'm intrigued to see where the story goes but honestly I have no thoughts like I have no idea where the plot is going to go from here based on some of the like reveals that happened in this book so I'm struggling to conceptualize like where the story is really going to go but overall I definitely um am like interested in continuing the series and I really appreciated this so I'm going to give this book four stars um I want to mention some stuff that I personally didn't like about this installment so one thing is the world building I really had hoped that in this book the world building would be expanded a bit more and I really feel like this series um I'm not it doesn't feel grounded in like a particular place like I feel like these people it, they don't have like a culture to speak of I kind of just wish that there was like more culture and stuff like that um infused in the world building because I just feel like there's nothing particularly distinct about the world that the author has crafted um and also I want to say that there's this character like I mentioned I did think that there was a lot of good character development but there's this one character named Marcus and he's kind of like an antagonist and I just don't think that his character makes any kind of sense I feel like he really shifts a lot within the narrative and so I can't figure out like who he is because the first book really portrays him to be like this brutish you know stupid um, violent man I won't say necessarily stupid but he kind of just portrayed as like a simple-minded violent brutish individual and then in this one we really discover that he's kind of like a political mastermind or something and it's just to me is not all it's not all coming together I feel like he doesn't feel like a fully fleshed out character and I, and I wish that his characterization was more consistent but yeah so hopefully um some of that stuff will get cleared up in later books but yeah I pretty much enjoyed it I liked it it was cool um so it, like I said it's like seven 15 right now I need to do whoa, I need to do a reading for one of my classes uh, that's happening later and then I'm gonna get into you have me at Ola and I have a lot of thoughts about this so we need to talk about this book too like we need to talk these characters are driving me to drink so I finished these last like 70 pages about two hours after the 24 hour mark so like hate that for me we failed step one but child getting through these pages was a fucking struggle let me tell you i struggled so much with this book i wanted to love this book like look at this cover this is one of the most stunning covers i've ever seen and i was so so excited to read this book i've been excited about it for months and i wanted to love it so bad and i just did not love it i didn't i feel horrible like i feel crushed by the fact that i didn't love it but so anyway let's talk about what this is about so you have me at Ola by Alexis Daria is about these two characters Jasmine and Ashton and they're both um, Puerto Rican actors uh, and they are recently starting this new project called Carmen in Charge at this big streaming service and this could be the next step for both of them in their career so it's like a really important thing they have this awkward first meeting it's just like it's basically the concept is like them being co-stars and having this really awkward energy and having to navigate their like disastrous um, first meeting and how to generate like on-screen heat while they have a really like frosty and um, 
awkward relationship in person and I'm gonna be honest it definitely is frosty and awkward for a good amount of this book because the main dude Ashton he is like very very distant and he has some reasons he's really like distant and withdrawn kind of character because he's intensely private because he has some tragic stuff happening in his backstory basically he's really worried about his privacy so he doesn't really open up all that much to his co-stars and he doesn't get close to them and everything like that so he is intensely private and so we don't even really see him and Jasmine interacting that much throughout the beginning of the book because he's just like constantly ducking her and so basically we learned that Ashton like he has a son and so he's hiding his son from the public which is fun you know he doesn't want to give all of his information away to the public because it endangered his son's life once before and he doesn't doesn't want to do that again so that makes sense I understand like his motivations as a person but I think it's kind of weird like he decides that he doesn't want to get close with his castmates and he doesn't want to talk to them about his son which is perfectly okay but like you can have conversations with people and not talk about your son like you know you can have a general discourse with someone like hey how's it going you know how's the coffee at craft services like you don't have to talk about your life or your family if you don't want to so another thing that's going on in this story is that Jasmine she has recently had this really like public breakup with this rock star at the beginning of the book and so she's getting all this bad publicity because of it and she's like really upset about it and like whatever and it makes sense because I mean they're saying mean things about her so it makes sense that she's upset about it that it's something that's really bothering her causing a lot of anxiety for her and and she's really worried about her career because she doesn't want to just be known as that person who gets into like bad breakups and stuff she wants to be respected as an actress which I really appreciate it but I felt like it was really strange to me that they never talk about like what kind of publicity steps her and her team were taking to handle the fact that like she was literally being slandered by this ex-boyfriend like he was in the news like acting like she was an obsessive stalker low-key and I felt like it didn't make sense to me that there, we never saw them like doing any damage control for that. They just kind of let him control the narrative that she was like some horrible, you know, obsessive ex-girlfriend. And I thought that was just really strange. Like it didn't make a lot of sense to me, especially because he, him and this situation is something that's continually brought up. So it never made sense to me why they were never like handling it but like, I'm gonna be honest with you I just didn't feel that much chemistry between these characters I didn't think that they had that much chemistry and I feel like the book really enforces the fact they don't have any chemistry for like a lot of the book because it's just like very awkward and weird for most of the beginning and then in the middle of the book when they're finally interacting and like you know having moments together it's just like this really rapid development from like awkward we never even talk to each other unless we're filming a scene to the next moment he's balls deep giving her back shots in front of a mirror and they're in love it's just like well okay like what I, for me personally there was no chemistry and I don't necessarily like hate insta love but I just think that it didn't work for me because I didn't really feel like these characters had that much chemistry I didn't feel like they had that much personality or that much like depth and I also felt like the writing in this I just didn't really love it like I felt like the author was definitely telling me a lot of stuff instead of showing me I felt like the author would kind of summarize events and summarize conversations or moments that the characters have together instead of really being like in the moment and showing us all of the like conversations or cute moments that they have it all kind of felt like a little montage of relationship development instead of like actual scenes of it it's for me it just it just didn't work i'm giving it two stars i was pretty bored throughout um there's also this moment I, this is kind of like a spoiler spoiler warning or whatever but basically there's this moment where Jasmine and Ashton they have broken up and Jasmine just feels like that's going to be so awkward and she can't continue to work on the show having to be his love interest and like co-star it's just not something she could do anymore so she decides that she's going to quit the show but like her quitting the show she is the show she's the main character the whole show is about her and she's going to quit it and she has like a three year contract with the show and she's just like yeah like fuck it I'm getting on a plane to LA and it's like ma'am what are you talking about and like obviously all that doesn't work out and everything it works out and they're happy and whatever blah 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 but it was such an annoying moment and it made me like low-key hate her character because she, her actions like her doing that she could have cost so many people their jobs it was just it was just frustrating I just felt like both of these characters they just had like worms for brains they just weren't making sense and like with the whole conflict portion it wasn't no kind of sense being made I'm starting to think that my sense of humor is just broken and maybe that's possible because this should do not be funny to me like books be like this is a rom-com this is so fucking funny and i'm like where are the jokes where are they like i don't understand it i don't get it it's just 
Ooh, mm. Well, to talk about some stuff that I did like, I do like what this book has to say about like consent in the film industry. Um, there's this moment where they talk about having an intimacy coordinator on like filming sets and I thought that that was really interesting. Um, I also think that it does some really nice stuff when it comes to family. Jasmine, she has a really complex relationship with her family but she has um, a really close relationship with her grandmother and her cousins and I thought that was really sweet and also Ashton's relationship with his son and his father was really important and I like those aspects as well. I definitely feel like those aspects of the story are what really shined. This was a buddy read with Noria from Noria Reads and Cindy from Read with Cindy. So I really liked reading it with them even though I didn't love this book. I really liked uh, talking about it with them and I think Cindy gave it two stars as well because it just, oh, uh, I just wanted to love it. I Twelve dollars. I'll never get it back. So anyway, that was my attempt at a 24 hour reading vlog. I kind of failed it, but I still think that it went like relatively well because I found a new comic that I really liked. I loved Sleepless, really enjoyed Torch Against the Night, and while I didn't really love You Had Me at Ola, I did appreciate Buddy reading it with some friends. So like, at the very least there was that. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I will see you all in my next one. Bye you guys! Like, comment, and subscribe! And a special thank you to all of my wonderful patrons.